Making an end grain chopping board is a great little project to get you back into the workshop again after that delightful Christmas break. But it's also a great way of clearing up that pile of off cuts in the corner gathering dust. But what size do you make an end grain chopping board and how much timber do you need to start? Well in this video I'm going to answer those questions. We've been selling our boards online for a couple of years now and these are by far our most popular sizes. This is 450mm by 350mm by 50mm thick and this is 400mm by 300mm by 40mm thick. I'll put all the sizes down in the description below so you don't have to scrabble for pen and paper and the pause button. These two, as you can see, are a single type of timber but don't be afraid to mix and match it up a bit because you can get some real interesting patterns. I quite like that one myself. Of course, if you're using up the offcuts in the corner, if you want to go single type, you're going to be limited, restricted by the length of offcuts you've got, unless you are prepared to mix and match it up a bit. So most of the time we're going to be starting with rough sawn timber. And the squarer it is before we start, the, the more timber we're going to be left with. As you can see on this piece, there's quite a little cut in it. Uh, but this piece is lovely and straight. Even so, this is starting off life at an ads over 40 mil. Uh, with it being so lovely and straight, it's still going to end up at about 38 mil, I'd say, by the time I've planed it. This one starts life again at 40 mil, but that cup's probably about 2 mil, so 4 mil I'm going to lose, maybe 5 mil. So that could be down as low as 34 mil by the time I get it square and flat. So once you've got your timber planed and square, the next step before calculating the size is to choose a pattern. You may be governed by the size of the offcuts that you've got, or you may be, or maybe you have the luxury of choosing a pattern for yourself. I've got a set size of piece that I usually cut. I'll leave those sizes down below underneath each size of board for you, should you wish to copy this delightful pattern here. Once you've decided on the size of pieces that you want to create the pattern you've got in mind, then you need to cut those pieces down, glue them together, and then plane them down again. When you've done that, you're then ready to start calculating what size board you can make. So my finished panel, if I can call it that, has come out at 36 mil. That means that the width of each row in my finished board will be 36 mil. So knowing that size, 36 mil, and now knowing what length our plank is, so that's 700, but there's a couple of little uh, gaps at the top of the joint there, and it's a bit higgledy piggledy at this end. So I'm going to say I've got 690 mil usable. So now it's time for the math. So I'll put the math up on the screen so that you can see it. You'll never read my writing. I struggle most of the time. So my plank that I'm going to cut from is 690 mil long. I know that the finished thickness of my plank is 36 mil, which means each row will be 36 mil wide. And I also know that I want my finished height to be 40 mil. In order to achieve a finished height of 40 mil, I know that I've got to go through another glue up and that I can get little deviations in the glue up. So I want an allowance to allow me to come down to the 40 mil finished height after I've finished sanding and planing. 
so I'm going to give myself two or three mil to play with. Let's say I give myself three mil to play with. So that's 43 mil that will come off the end of this plank, plus the thickness of my blade. So 46 mil will come off of my plank each time I generate another row from my finished board. So knowing the length at 690, if I divide that by the amount that's coming off for each row, 46 mil, my calculator tells me reliably that I'll get 15 pieces out of this plank of 40 mil tall. So if I then take 15 times 36 mil, the width, my trusty calculator says I'll end up with a board that's 540 mil long. So at this point, I could play around with the numbers and go for a thicker board given the length of plank that I've got to start with. I've added an allowance of six mil to each cut that I make. So let's say I want to see if I could get a 50 mil thick board out of this piece, plus my six mil allowance. So 690 divided by 56 gives me 12 pieces. 12 times 36 mil, the thickness of each row, gives me 432 mil. Mm. Do we think that's big enough? Well, quite honestly, it's entirely down to you. This particular board is about 405 mil. So 430 mil, what would that look like? That would still look absolutely fine. So on 690 mil, you could easily get a 50 mil thick, 400 mil long board. So to recap, length of plank divided by total cut per row equals number of pieces. Number of pieces times height of plank equals length of finished chopping board. Clear as mud? Good. So, armed with that calculation, I've pre-calculated some standard sizes that I use quite often, and I'll put these down in the description below. But for a 450mm long chopping board at 50mm thick, I pre-cut 850mm. 400mm long chopping board at 40 mil thick, I pre-cut 650, and 350 mil chopping board at 40 mil thick, I'd pre-cut 500. And finally, here's my plank cut into pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I obviously went with the 46. Put it. very long board. I should probably end up doing that. Beautiful. And that's it, all the math you need to know to make any size end grain chopping board you fancy. No surprises, nothing complicated. And once you get used to gauging the size that your timber is going to be after you've planed it, you won't need to wait until later on in the process to be able to calculate what size board you can get out of any given piece. So I hope that'll be of some help to you in your end grain chopping board endeavors. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to my channel and possibly even donate one of your likes. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Ta-ra.